All right, so this is my antenna launcher. What this is is a Vivor bead blaster that I got off of TikTok, and I removed the end piece. It would come out to about here, and it was flat like a duck bill. And it was designed to pull the trigger on here, and it would see the bead. So <clears throat> the max working pressure on this is 120 light in here. 120 PSI. Um, it comes with, you get a pressure gauge, you get a safety blow-off valve, so you fill it. So basically everything you see from here back comes with it. I paid $60. Now I'm fine with capitalism, but I see people are selling these like hams or building them or whatever. They're about 150 bucks, which is fine. I just went this route because you get everything you need. All I had to do was I had to go out and buy this adapter here at the you know hardware store, and then an inch and a half stub piece of pipe. I had all this stuff, but if if you were to go out, you'd have to buy this. You have to buy the Vivor bead blaster. You got to buy this adapter, a piece of PVC, two band clamps, and a fishing reel. Um, and some sort of shuttle, which I'm 3D printing my shuttles. So I got one of these on the end. You see there, just clipped to the bale right now. And, um, you know, when I started pricing out the parts to build one, this was the cheapest way to go. Now it is heavy, um, but I borrowed ones that people had the butterfly valve. And you needed a lot of pressure, I think, because the inefficiency of opening the valve. Um, I borrowed one of the ones that I see a lot of the hams are building and selling. And the valve runs on batteries, which I wasn't a huge fan of. This is all just electromechanical, or excuse me, pneumatic and mechanical. Uh, you know, air pressure, you know, there's nothing to this. So... Uh, as you'll see in the later video, it doesn't take much pressure. You know, if you want, though, for fun, you can get some old potatoes or crab apples, send her down to about here, put about 100 PSI, and you'll send that potato into the stratosphere. But anyways, this is what I got, the Vivor um, bead seeder and uh, on the TikTok shop. So I kept the other piece if I ever wanted to see the bead, but um, it's... Like I said, very easy. In case people are wondering, you can launch. Like I said, the little, uh, what you'll see, the 3D printed um, shuttles that I make, uh, you could easily go, I don't know, I've never tried it, but I mean, well, no, excuse me, I've never tried more, but you could easily get these shuttles 200 feet in the air. So you're going to have no problem clearing any trees um, with this thing. Like I said, I only go to about 40 PSI. Um, it's easily up to 100 feet. Um, you can go to 80 PSI. I've never tried it just because I don't feel like losing my 3D printed shuttles. Um, well, I take that back. I did do it one time to test it with my daughter. And just for fun, I didn't know. I put it to 80 and it was gone. I never saw it. I mean, it just went like 200 feet up if I had to guess. It was gone. So what I can say about this arrangement is that there's plenty of power to punch through a tree, plenty of oomph to get up and over a tree, um, but really you just have to put a tiny bit of air into this thing. So anyways, Radio Man out. Okay, so I already put air in this. You're going to have to figure out what is going to work, but I find that you don't need a lot of air with these, probably because they're a little aerodynamic in the weight. I find about... 40 PSI, no more, is enough to get you about 50 to 75 feet without any difficulty. Um, any more than that, it's just too much. These, these will go hundreds of feet without any problem. So you have this. I already have air in it. You're going to need an inexpensive fishing reel and a little quick connect on the end of it. doesn't really matter where the fishing wheel, reel is attached. And you're also going to want some of this like surveyor string 
and I'll show that in a minute why but the first thing we need to get this into the tree so what we do is connect this. there you go you'll hear you'll hear it hit the bottom of the barrel you're going to want to take up this excess bit of string you don't want a big loop of string hanging off the end. And the other thing which is extremely important is you're going to want to open the bale. And you're going to want it so you don't have a bunch of loose string hanging like that. So you got your bale open. You're going to want to be kind of close to the tree so that your shot goes straight up over you don't want to be too far back in an angle because you'll shoot it way out in the woods you just want it to go just up over the tree and come straight down so here we go so you can see i kind of have it almost straight up and down not quite at a 90 to go up over the top of the tree that actually probably went slightly higher than i needed to but that looks okay Follow me over here. Just about perfect. One of the reasons why I made these orange is they're easier to find when they hit the ground. So all we got to do is disconnect this here. And I'm not going to do this for the brevity of the video because I think you guys can figure the rest out. But this is how... I'm going to use this. The reason why I don't use, this isn't the final rope I use because what I found is I typically like to use paracord and it's just too, it will get snagged if you try to put too thick of a rope up into the tree. So I actually kind of do two pulls. I'll get this into the tree and then I attach my final cord to it. So all I'll do, so I'll just tie my surveyor string off to this fishing line, get this through the tree. This is a lot more sturdy. And then I can pull a heavier rope to the tree. So that's how you deploy a dipole into the tree. That's it.